Hello, welcome back to Miss Bell's classroom. Today in class we will be talking about the United States history and we'll be focusing on the 1910s decade. So to begin, I'm going to start talking about the 1910s with the presidents and who was president. Um, William Taft started out in the 1910s as president and was president until 1913. After leaving the presidency, Taft did not want to retire. He took a job as a law professor at Yale, at Yale University. Then, in 1921, he finally got his dream job when President Warren G. Harding appointed him to the Supreme Court as Chief Justice. Taft really enjoyed working on the Supreme Court. He is the only president to also serve as a Supreme Court Justice. So after Taft, Woodrow Wilson then became president in 1913. So here is a picture of Woodrow Wilson. served as president until 1921. Does anyone know what Bill Woodrow Wilson is on? You've probably never seen one of these. Yes. It's not the hundred dollar bill, it's much more. It's not the fifty, it's more than the hundred. Yes. It's not a thousand, it is actually the hundred thousand dollar bill. Here he is on their hundred thousand dollar bill. Cool is that? Raise your hand if you would like to have one of these. Yeah. Woodrow Wilson had a lot of programs and laws. Some of them that he put into place were the Federal Reserve System. And this system is still in place today. And it helps regulate the economy by controlling the money and supply. He also put into place the Federal Trade Commission. Um, Wilson put this commission in place to keep business practices fair for all. He changed the tax system. He implemented a graduated tax system. And what that means is people who made less money would pay taxes at a lower rate than the rich. And the system is still used today. Any questions so far? Okay, so go ahead and take notes. Because we will have a quiz at the end. It's important that you're paying attention. Or if you know everything, you can take a nap. So, continue. After a year, um, Woodrow, after a year after Woodrow became president, World War I broke out in Europe. And after growing up in the South during the American Civil War, Wilson hated war and wanted to keep the U.S. out of World War I. He managed to do this for the rest of his first term and won a second term as president with a campaign he based on. He kept us out of the war. During Wilson's second term, Germany began to sink U.S. ships traveling to Britain. The U.S. had no choice but to join the war. Wilson called World War I the war to end all wars. He said the U.S. must fight because the world must be made safe for democracy. He had the idea for a League of Nations. This would be a group of countries that helped to negotiate disputes and try to keep peace in the world. And another interesting thing about Woodrow Wilson was that he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1919 for his efforts with the League of Nations. Okay, so go ahead 
go ahead and take your notes before we move on to our next topic of the 1910s. Okay, so now we're going to move on to some of the major events that happened in the 1910s. So I'm just going to kind of go through a little bit of a timeline and what happened. Um, feel free to take notes as I'm discussing these things. And if you have any questions, you may raise your hand and we can talk about them too. So, to start off the 1910s decades, in May 1911, Standard Oil was declared an unreasonable monopoly by the United States Supreme Court and ordered dissolved under the powers of the Sherman Antitrust Act. In June 1912, Mount Katamaya in southwest Alaska erupted in one of the largest recorded volcanic explosions in the history of the world. That's what we see here. This is a picture of Mount Katmai today. You can see here that now this crater is a lake. States Marines were deployed to Nicaragua, Nicaragua due to its default on loans to the United States and its European allies. In January 1914, basic wage rates were increased by Ford Motor Company, and workers would now receive $5 per day for eight hours of work versus $2.40 per day for nine hours previously. So could you imagine working eight hours per day doing chores for your parents and only making five dollars or even making two dollars and forty cents? But you have to think the value of money wasn't as much then, so like a quarter would be worth much more than it is today. In 1915, the British ship Lusitania is sunk by a German U-boat submarine, causing 120 American passengers to be lost. So here is the boat, and this was sunk by Germans, and there were Americans on there. And this kind of was what led us into World War I. crisis to passengers itself, an apology to the United States, and promised payments. This led to the United States turning against Germany and causing the U.S. to get involved in the war. So by the middle of 1918, the United States military forces had over one million troops in Europe fighting in World War I. In August 1916, the National Park Service is officially created when President Woodrow Wilson signed legislation from Congress with the mission to protect and preserve the national lands, historic sites, and wildlife of the system for future generations. One of the national parks to open during this decade was the Grand Canyon National Park. So, has anyone heard of the Grand Canyon, or has anyone seen the Grand Canyon, or wants to go visit it? Okay, so some of us have actually been to the Grand Canyon. So, it is one of the most popular United States um, tourism spots, and I definitely would recommend to go see it someday. It's very, very, very cool. Um... So, another major event was in January 1919. Prohibition became the law of the land. It would remain illegal to sell and consume 
alcoholic beverages in the United States until passage of the 21st Amendment, repealing the 18th. In December 1933, in March 1918, time zones are officially established by an act of the United States Congress with daylight savings time to go into effect on March 31st. So raise your hand if you've heard of daylight savings time. A lot of us have. So that's either, that is when the clocks either move forward an hour or the clocks move back an hour. So we should be having daylight savings time very soon when our clocks will spring forward. Okay, so another very tragic event that happened was in August 1918, the influenza epidemic, the Spanish flu, spans the globe, killing over 20 million people worldwide and around 548,000 people in the United States. So here is um, a picture of people who were sick with the Spanish flu. And you can see how many people that really is and how dangerous it really was. It's a huge, major tragedy that had happened. Any questions so far? got that. Holding up votes for women. And that really um, influenced the 20th century a lot too, which we'll get to soon. Or the 1920s, I should say. Okay, so any questions so far? Okay, so let's move on to fashion. Women's fashion was characterized by fluid, soft silhouettes, big hats, and short hair. Dress length came up from the floor to above the ankle. Oftentimes, women wore a tunic over a long skirt. Skirts were widest at the hips and became narrow at the ankle. Shoes had high curved heels. and Women often wore boots during the day and changed into a court shoe in the evening. Raise your hand if you wear sneakers or tennis shoes. So a lot of us do. Those were invented in 1917, so over a hundred years ago. So here are some examples of women's fashion. We can see that they're wearing very long skirts or long dresses. And then there's also like a tunic that goes over her dresses. They've got lots of hats here. It's very fashionable. Um, you can see that they're starting to wear kind of accessories, belts. Some have jewelry. Also their curved heels they have there. Tons, big hats with large brims became widely popular. As you can see here, there were lots of different styles of hats, but the big brimmed hats were mostly popular, but they also had those bows on them, lots of accessories on the hats. And it kind of changed throughout the decade too. So 1910 to 12, these were some of the popular styles. 1913 to 1916, these were some of the popular styles. In 1917 to 1919, these were some of the popular styles. You can kind of see the 
and that kind of transitions into the 1920s fashion too. so far okay so um, next we're going to talk about women's um, swimwear and men's so women's swimwear was very conservative extending down to the mid thigh and as you see here and then some of them even wore like leggings while they were swimming um, usually the more conservative women wore the leggings um, with these already very modest swimsuits very different from now and even the men wore these types of swimsuits too they were very very conservative um so pants were worn for men's fashion. Pants were worn at ankle length and cuffed, and the Norfolk jacket was popular for outdoorsmen. The most casual jacket was a blazer, and it was more worn for most everyday activities. Um, formal shirts had collars that were tall and stiff, while ties were narrow. So you can see here, pretty much suits their main fashion. They would wear hats, would have their canes there, but they were very stiff and narrow with the ties. so far about what we've talked about. Okay, so now we're going to kind of move on to the cultural part with movies and music. Um, there was a lot of development for the movies and music during this decade. Um, so starting in the 1910s, there was very little technology to help produce music. Most music was performed live in vaudevilles. At vaudevilles, live entertainment consisted of stand-up comedy, musical performances, and dance routines. So, because there were no speakers, many of the musicians resorted to loud music that would project throughout big theaters. And it was not until the invention of the microphone in the 1920s that this would change. Raise your hand if you have a guess of what music genre you think was the most popular. We kind of talked about this in the 1900s. Yes. Yes, it is jazz music. So, jazz music was very popular in this decade. Um, by 1910, jazz music had become popular. Very, very popular in New Orleans. Later, a number of different jazz genres appeared throughout the country with very distinct regional variations. And jazz was very highly influential during this popular time, um, and it's even very popular in modern forms today. Um, this is in regarding movies. This is the decade when the movie making shifted from New York to Hollywood because of the better outdoor weather for filming. And movies were very, very short. They were typically around 15 minutes. And they were called one reelers. They could film a movie in one reel. Um, the first Frankenstein film was produced in 1910 and was only 16 minutes long. So raise your hand if you've heard of Frankenstein. You might have seen it during Halloween. So this is the first movie poster. Frankenstein, and you can see that it was March 15th, 1910. So do you see any differences or similarities from the Frankenstein that you know of today compared to Frankenstein here? Yes, so his 
nowadays Frankenstein's skin is green. Yes. Ish, much, much shorter hair now. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this Frankenstein's hat looks more normal shaped, whereas Frankenstein today is hat is kind of a square ish shape. Anything else? Yes. His neck has it's almost like that cut with the stitches on it. Yeah. So Frankenstein looks very, very different, but the original Frankenstein was created almost a hundred years ago. Producers began by 1912. Fifteen producers had established themselves in Hollywood. So now let's move on to sports. In May 1911, the India Indianapolis 500 auto race is run for the first time in Indianapolis, Indiana. The race is won by Ray Harun in the Marmon Wasp. And there was a lot for sports. So, now let's move on to immigration. In 1910, a massive wave of immigration by African Americans within the United States began. It was known as the Great Migration. The first Great Migration um, was from the time period 1910 to 1930, numbered about 1.6 million migrants who left their rural areas in the south to migrate to northern industrial cities. The outbreak of World War I was from 1914 to 1918, saw the anti-immigration trends and pattern change as Americans left the country to fight in the war, creating a labor shortage. Immigration levels from Europe fell because of the war. Many Mexicans were con encouraged to work in the United States, and Mexicans were exempted, exempt from many immigration restrictions during the labor shortage caused by World War I. The Immigration Act of 1917, influenced by the Dillingham Commission report, restricted immigration from Eastern Asia by creating an Asiatic beard zone and introducing a literacy test for all immigrants over 14 years of age. Now, let's move on to inventions. All of these items were invented in the 1910s. The zipper, the Oreo cookie, stainless steel, the first crossword puzzle, the first pop-up toaster, lifesavers, and people enjoyed them because they didn't melt in the sun. The first moving assembly line is introduced and adapted for mass production by the Ford Motor Company. This allowed automobile construction time to decrease by almost 10 hours per vehicle. New York socialite Mary Phelps Jacob patented the brassiere in the United States, which he invented one year earlier. Alexander Graham Bell and Thomas A. Watson conduct the first telephone conversation between New York and San Francisco. Here is Alexander Graham Bell, and he's very famous for inventing what we would know as today as the telephone. Okay, so now we are going to talk about some other interesting facts. So, in the 1910s, <laughs> it's a 
life expectancy for males was 48.4 and females 51.8 um, also, the traffic light first came out with the colors red, orange, and yellow, but no one could tell the difference, so we had to switch up those colors. In the 1910s, the population was about 92 million, and divorce rates were one out of a thousand couples would get a divorce. Milk in the 1910s cost about 32 cents per gallon, and the average salaries for males was 750 a year and 600 a year for females. So that is all the information I have. It is now time for the quiz. So please take out your notebooks and write 1 through 10. Okay, please write your name on your quiz and write 1 through 10. Okay, raise your hand if you're not ready yet. Okay, so number one. How many people died from the Spanish flu worldwide? So not in the United States, how many people died from the Spanish flu worldwide? Number two, when did World War I end? Number three, why did movie filming move from New York to Los Angeles? Number four, by 1912, how many producers were in Los Angeles? Number five, who were the two presidents of the 1910s? Number six, name one invention from the 1910s. Number seven, what was women's fashion like in the 1910s? And you can use this as a clue. Number eight, when did the Grand Canyon National Park open? What year? Number nine, name a famous person from this decade. Number ten, why did the U.S. get involved in World War I? Number eleven, list one fact you learned about the 1910s and share it in the comments. Okay, does anyone need me to repeat any questions? Which number? Number five. Okay. Number five. Who were the two presidents of the 1910s? Any others? Okay. I'm going to go over the answers, so please check your work now. Number one. How many people died from the Spanish flu worldwide? It's 20 million worldwide. Number two, when did World War I end? In 1919. Number three, why did moving, filming move from New York to Los Angeles? Los Angeles has warmer weather. Number four, by 1912, how many producers were in Los Angeles? Were 15. Number five, who were the two presidents of the 1910s? William Howard Taft and Woodrow Wilson. Number six, name an invention from the 1910s. You could have said Oreo, gas masks, street lights, stainless steel, crossword puzzles, pop-up toaster. Number seven, what was women's fashion like in the 1910s? 
kind of sad fluid, soft silhouettes, big hats, and short hair. Dress length came up from the floor to above the ankle. Oftentimes women wore a tunic over a long skirt. Skirts were widest at the hips and became narrow at the ankle. Shoes had high curved heels. Women often wore boots during the day and changed into a court shoe in the evenings. Number eight, when did the Grand Canyon National Park open? 1919. Number nine, name a famous person from this decade. Could have said Henry Ford, Woodrow Wilson, William Taft. Number 10, why did the U.S. get involved in World War I? It's because of the American passengers lost on the ship here. Number 11, varies. Okay, so thank you for learning about the 1910s today. I hope that you learned a lot of information and you're able to relax. Good night.